Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Good evening, sir. I missed one of the classes on Sunday. I couldn't join. So <clears throat> let me continue from where we have stopped last time. I think we have completed the uh, sexual reproduction in flowering plants and we were discuss we have discussed about what is double fertilization and triple fusion. Okay. After the double fertilization and triple fusion, what happens to the embryo that is developed? That is also another question that is normally asked. So refer to the textbook and learn those portions that what happens to the ovary and the flower altogether. The petals and the sepals, everything fall off. The ovarian wall that can or the ovary converts into fruit and the ovule converts into seed. <coughs> Inside the seed, we will find the embryo. Embryo is developed from the zygote and a large portion of the seed is covered with stored food, which is called as the endosperm, which is formed from the endosperm mother cell. Okay, so this portion is also quite often asked. Um, there is another small portion also that you need to uh, check out. That is the structure of a seed. Okay, when when a seed is growing, the embryo develops into a very primitive uh, shoot system that is called as a primule and a very primitive root system that is called, called as a radical. Okay. This question, these topics sometimes can be asked for either labeling or very rarely noticed uh, asking for drawing. Okay. But most probably it will be for labeling. One after that, the textbook talks about the, the male and female reproductive system. Okay. <clears throat> the male, <clears throat> human, uh, uh, male and female reproductive system. So let me uh, go through the major parts of it. <coughs> Human shows sexual dimorphism. What is sexual dimorphism? Where the male and the female organisms are completely different from one another. That is called showing sexual dimorphism. And we have two different systems, the female reproductive system and the male reproductive system. Both of them need to be learned to draw. The female reproductive system is easy to draw, uh, uh, whereas it is difficult to uh, uh, explain, whereas the male reproductive system is difficult to draw, but it's easy to explain. This is a side view. In the textbook, we can find the uh, front view also. Only front view need to be learned. So the major reproductive organs in, in the internal anatomy, we can find a pair of uh, ovaries, <clears throat> a uterus, and an external vagina. These are the major parts we can find uh, in female reproductive system. There's another method of representing the female reproductive system uh, from the front view. A simplified version is there in the textbook. We can go for that also. Okay. What are ovaries? Ovaries are very small organs. They are <clears throat> egg-shaped in structure and they are two in number attached to the backward. And they produce, they are the main reproductive organ in, in uh, animals. Sorry, in, in human beings, in, uh, in general, in higher animals. Okay, so <clears throat> they produce um, this thing, eggs or egg cells or ovums. We have two ovaries and these ovaries uh, produce only one egg per month or one egg in 28 days and they release one egg uh, alternately. Okay, And that egg is what we call as an ovum or ova. Okay, <clears throat> so female reproductive cell is one of the largest cell in the uh, human body and this is normally produced by the by only one egg per uh, 28 days is produced. Over a span of the entire life, uh, the reproductive span of, the, of a female, uh, hardly around 400 to 500 uh, ovums can be matured. Okay. Now, the, the thing responsible for this is estrogen. 
the entire process start with the production of a hormone that is developed from the uh, brain uh, that is pituitary gland the pituitary gland produces a hormone called the FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. Under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone, uh, the ovary produces a hormone estrogen. And estrogen is responsible for ovulation. Estrogen is also responsible for the secondary sexual characters. And then it is also responsible for the process of ovulation. <coughs> Once the ovulation, the uh, under the influence of estrogen, uh, the follicles, which are probably uh, ovums which are present inside the uh, ovaries, they develop and converts into an ovum. And it takes around 14 days time for conversion of a follicle to an ovum. And once this completes its uh, growth, it can it is it is uh, removed uh, released out of the ovary, and that process is called ovulation. The ovulation happens exactly on 14th day after the starting of the formation of the ov ovum. Okay, so. <clears throat> After 14th day, uh, the, the body changes its uh, chemical composition. Then the ovary produces another hormone that is progesterone. Progesterone is mainly produced for preparing the endometrium. Endometrium means the internal lining of the uh, uterus. So it is actually produced to, <clears throat> to keep the uh, internal lining of the uterus well vascularized or filled with blood vessels. So that if the ovum which is released from the ovary on 14th day, uh, by the time it reaches the, uh, the, uh, the uterus, whether fertilized or unfertilized, uh, every time when the ovary produces an ovum, the body is expecting a fertilization. Okay, That is why every time, the uh, soon after the ovulation, progesterone is produced and progesterone keeps the internal lining of the wall of the uterus vascularized and because of that what happens it <clears throat> the, the blood vessels inside the uterus that increases in a number that that remains softer and more branches of capillaries develop and it is getting well prepared to receive a fertilized egg and <clears throat> then inside the uh, fallopian tube once the ovulation has happened, the ovum is placed into the fallopian tube. Fallopian tube travel, carries the ovum forward. In On the internal lining of the fallopian tube, there are many uh, uh, ciliated epithelium. And the ciliated epithelium keeps on pushing the ovum forward. And that is the, the narrowest part, part in the entire uh, female reproductive system. And because it is very narrow, the, the chances of meeting a, a sperm cell is very high in the fallopian tube. And probably uh, the fertilization mostly happens inside the fallopian tube. Other places also, the fertilization can happen if an ovum is meeting a sperm. But uh, the chances of meeting the uh, sperm and uh, ovum in the uterus uh, is too uh, rare. Why? Because uterus is a huge organ for a small cell like an ovum or a sperm. So, <clears throat> fallopian tube actually narrows down that area and fertilization normally takes place in fallopian tube. And from there, the fertilized uh, zygote will be pushed forward and the zygote gets implanted in the wall of uterus. <clears throat> the lower portion of the uh, uterus is the cervix and that is the place from where the the child will be pushed outside uh, after completion of the uh, growth. Inside the uterus, the endometrium plays a very important role. The endometrium <clears throat> provides all the uh, nutrients. Once an implantation happens, the endometrium uh, gets specially designed for that. It develops some microvilli that attach to one side to the mother's body and other side to the, the embryo, which we call as the placenta. The placenta develops into an umbilical cord, and through this umbilical cord, it continuously provides nutrition to the growing embryo, oxygen to the growing embryo, and it collects waste material from the embryo and then place it back to the mother's body. And it keeps on nourishing the embryo until the complete uh, uh, 
growth is completed and the child is delivered once the the body organs of the <clears throat> uh, feet, uh, the thing embryo is visible or the growing child is visible then we call it as a fetus and then on the external side we can find vagina is the external uh, reproductive organ unlike the uh, the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system does not uh, merge with the urinary system there is a separate urethra which is opening <clears throat> which is which is an opening from the urinary bladder but it is not merging with the uh, female reproductive system <coughs> so this is a timeline for the entire uh, system that is happening in women's uh, or female reproductive system that is uh, if a fertilization does not happen This is what happens when when a fertilization happens. If a fertilization does not happen, and the female undergoes menstrual cycle, what is menstrual cycle? And the long wait of uh, a fertilized egg in the uterus when it becomes uh, a failure, or when when a fertilization does not happen and no implant implantation happens, the body restart the cycle. And at the beginning of the next cycle, in the special preparation that has been made on the endometrium that will shrink back and due to the shrinking of shrinking, shrinking back the blood vessels break and the, there will be a blood flow and that is what, what, what we call as the menstrual cycle and this normally happens uh, uh, once in a month uh, once in every 28 days if the ovaries are working properly or regularly if the hormonal balances are uh, good then it should happen once in every 28 days. The starting of the menstrual cycle is considered as the beginning of the next ovarian cycle. And normally, it's, uh, the, the ovarian, the menstrual cycle extends up to around five days or to up to seven days. And by on the other side, during this time, another ovum is also under preparation. And that ovum will get methyl sure by 14th day so 14th day the ovulation happens <clears throat> and 14th day to around 17th day or 18th day the ovum will be available in the uh, fallopian tubule and from there by 20th day it will be somewhere in the uterus and it will still wait for another few days <clears throat> for a fertilization and an implantation if it does not happen the next menstruation cycle starts so that is how the female reproductive system happens. In the male reproductive system is much simpler in terms of its anatomy and uh, functioning. Uh, it consists of a pair of testicles, <coughs> uh, a long tubular structure called the vas deferens, and few glands which are associated with it. The basic difference between a male reproductive system and a female reproductive system is that in a female reproductive system, the major uh, reproductive organ, that is the, the uterus, the um, ovaries, they are situated inside the abdominal canal cavity. Whereas in female, in male reproductive system, the major organ is the testicles. That is where the uh, sperms are produced. And that is present on the outer side. Very often this question is asked, why is the, the testicles situated outside the body. That's mainly because uh, the for the proper production of sperms in testicles, it requires a lower temperature. And because of that, it is situated outside. In a child, it is normally situated inside the abdominal cavity. And when a child, a boy enters into the puberty, it descends down into the scrotal site for adjusting the temperature on the <clears throat> which, which requires a lesser temperature. And then it starts producing uh, testosterone and uh, the same uh, sperms. Testosterone brings about the secondary sexual characters in, in males, and uh, sperms are the reproductive cells. The sperms which are produced remains collected in the epididymis for a long, short period of time, and from epididymis it can enter into the vas deferens and can, can come out. On the way, there are 
few glands associated with it. One is prostate gland, corpus gland, and um, uh, <clears throat> yes, the prostate gland and seminal vesicle. <coughs> or which is the seminal vesicle itself is called as the corpus gland. Okay. So these glands are associated with it. And the secretion from these glands uh, provides nutrition to the sperms because sperm is a specialized cell which is supposed to remain uh, alive outside the body for a quite good amount of time or till it reaches the female reproductive system and meet with a with a ovum that might take quite good amount of time. Okay, <clears throat> here uh, because of that, the sperms are supplied with a lot of nutrition, a lot of a liquid medium to swim through, and some chemicals that can increase the speed of the uh, sperm. Okay, so these are produced by the prostate gland and the seminal vesicle glands. And these normally together are called as the seminal. Scrotum is a bike structure situated outside the body in which testes are located. Testicles or testes are the male reproductive organs where <coughs> the sperms are produced and the testosterone is produced. Testosterone is responsible for uh, the secondary sexual characters and <clears throat> that produces sperms. Sperms are very tiny and they are produced in large quantity and can only one sperm can fuse with an ovum. So this is a short description about the male reproductive system. The so female uh, male reproductive system is similar to draw. Sorry, it is simple, similar to explain, but it is difficult to draw. So I want all of you to, to practice uh, the male reproductive system and female reproductive system. Sometimes it is normally asked as a combined question that explain the entire functioning of either male or female reproductive system. <laughs> with suitable diagram. This can be a three marker question or a five marker question. Okay. The next thing that is as explained in the textbook is regarding <coughs> the uh, sexual health. Sexual health is another topic which is explained in the textbook. The sexual health mainly deals with uh, one, the sexually transmitted diseases. The sexually transmitted diseases or STDs. There are many sexually transmitted diseases, but um, be, be uh, aware that sexually transmitted diseases are not always formed or it is not always caused on sex organs. Okay, it is simply that, he, for example, uh, when we are saying that corona is transmitted by air, mm, by breathing, mm, or by nose and mouth and eyes, so it, it affects only the upper respiratory system. Okay. <clears throat> Similarly, how are say jaundice spread or typhoid spread by drinking dirty water or contaminated water? Okay, that is how it spreads. Fine. But which part of the body is it affected? Maybe the digestive system in case of typhoid, if it is jaundice, the liver is affected. Right. Similarly, the diseases which can be spread from one person to another person through sexual organs or sexual contact are what the last sexually transmitted diseases. But there is nothing, uh, um, uh, it is not compulsory that the disease should always happen in sexual organs only. For example, one of the most common diseases AIDS, A-I-D-S, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Okay, learned by heart, it's form as a single alpha form also. Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. This is caused by a virus called the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. And this normally enters the body through many, many parts. It can enter through the bloodstream, 
by by using used syringes needles it can transmit uh, from during a blood transfusion or it can also transmit it through the sexual contact okay so uh, this is one of the disease but which part of the body is it affected it is affecting the blood of the person which part of the blood wbc it attacks wbc in blood and it it uh, uh, deactivates all the wbc and makes the body vulnerable for any disease okay so similarly there is an another disease also mentioned in uh, textbook that is syphilis syphilis and one more disease is mentioned that is uh, very commonly found disease sexually transmitted <coughs> there are two or three sexually transmitted diseases are mentioned in the textbook that is all that they are also very often asked okay so these names you must remember uh, hiv syphilis and one more <clears throat> okay so this is one part where the the sexually transmitted diseases are explained the second part of this is um, contraception 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 means avoiding unwanted pregnancies this can be mainly done by two methods one we call as the barrier methods one or by one or the other methods you Uh, stop the entry of uh, or the meeting of the male gametes with the female gametes that becomes the barrier methods another one is chemical methods okay chemical methods by using chemicals barrier methods may be either surgical method it can be either surgically you can cut off the the, uh, the tube or somewhere like that for example surgical methods include two methods one it can be have it can be done in females for the <coughs> tubectomy where we are cutting out the oviduct or the fallopian tube or it can be done in males also which is called as vasectomy which where the vas deferens is cut so that the sperms do not can contact with the ovum these are two other surgical methods apart from this there are many other barrier methods also <coughs> this can also be done by using condoms or it can also be done by using iuc iuc stands for intra uterine contraceptive devices and one of the best example for this one copper copper tea okay for copper tea uh, plugs both the entry of the fallopian tube and because of that uh, plus some now nowadays the medicated ones are also available which will uh, which will kill away the sperm um, cells also. okay <clears throat> another method is chemical methods there are many chemicals which are available uh, hormonal pills these are the most commonly used hormonal control pills or that we call as the the contraceptive pills is normally used as a medicinal uh, the people who are having irregular uh, menstrual cycles they can use this over a period of time and can control their hormonal imbalances in the body and this can also control the uh, but out of this condoms are the only one which can do, which can be used for both contraception as well as protection against stds these are the only one that can protect both but none of these methods uh, guarantees 100 percentage contraception so there are flaws in each and every method okay <clears throat> so these are the major thing another thing that has been indirectly explained in the textbook is 
regarding the the marriageable age uh, early uh, motherhood uh, can cause great, great damage to the the uh, mother and the child so uh, the textbook advises to enter into the motherhood only after attaining <clears throat> maturity or as per the government laws and now the marriageable age has been increased to 11 sorry 21 years okay <clears throat> 21 years for both boys as well as girls this is another major topic that has been uh, explained in the textbook i am expecting this kind of topics because it is more related to the society and the societal problems so it can be put into some paragraphs and can be asked as uh, a paragraph based question or something like that it might be uh, part of the question <clears throat> so these are the major things that are involved in the uh, chapter reproduction okay uh, i have requested to, for rearranging one of the session that we have missed but before that i would like to uh, give, give some glimpse of some of the portions of the next chapter also but which is also very much essential very much important at the same time which is a very scorable chapter chapter that is heredity heredity is a very scorable chapter so i, I would like to give some glimpse of uh, one of the things that you must take care is the mono hybrid and the di hybrid cross okay that must be taken care before uh, anything else it's very simple at the same time very uh, you know easy to remember also Krieger Mental has done many experiments. One of the very common question that is asked is about <coughs> Krieger Mental. From the heredity chapter, what are the things that you must memorize? One, hmm. why did Krieger Mental? this thing must be memorized at least three four characteristic of this plant why why what made uh, or what was the success behind uh, what is that what are the reasons behind the success of germinal number 1 it's an annual plant number 2 it is a plant that allows both both the uh, uh self pollination as well as cross pollination number 3 it produces large number of offsprings number 4 it has got very clear seven distinct characters which are not mixed up because it always allows self pollination also so these characters at least four to five points must be written under it number uh, let me note it down one of the point is that allows self and cross pollination another characteristic is that identified seven distinct characters so he, he has got a lot of another characteristic is that large number of offsprings that is one very major reason <clears throat> another major reason for that is that annual plants or we what we can say okay very very short life span so he could complete his work very fast maybe within a year completed his work so this at least three four points must be explained well regarding the the, the why did mental uh, grigor mental chose or choose autism sativum for his study so how why was he so successful another major thing is that he, the the three laws that he has learned by heart those three laws the the law of first law he has given is that the law of segregation second one is the law of independent sortment 
and third one is the law of dominance. These three laws must be learned by heart in statement. State the law. This can be one of the questions. Okay. So learn by heart these laws as it is. I will take an example of the tall plants and dwarf plants uh, so that it is easy for us to, to understand. <clears throat> Yes, one of the experiment that is monohybrid crows. Some of the terminologies that he has explained must be learned by heart. The first experiment uh, he has done is the monohybrid crows. What is monohybrid crows means? Monohybrid crows means when you are studying only one character. For example, he has taken uh, the height of the plant. The character he has taken is height plant. This is the character he has taken. And according to him, there are few things that controls the height of the plant. And he has named it as capital T, capital T, or small t, small t. So he has said that these are the factors that controls this character. Each factor is made up of <clears throat> one or two letters. So each one, for example, here it is symbol T or here it is symbol 1 T. So these single letters he has named it as alleles. And so these are the terminology he has. What he has taken is that one plant which are pure tall. Pure tall means which never give out any dwarf plants. According to him, he has said that he, we will use two capital T's for that. And he has taken another plant, which is pure dwarfs. That was, that for that, he has given the letter small t, small t. And he said that he, according to the law of, according to the law of, segregation according to the law of segregation at the time of reproduction these two capital T's they will not go together they will separate out similarly here also the two small t they will not go together they will separate out what is that law saying that that law is law of segregation that means when we are talking about the pure tall plant let me write here pure Tall plant and this pure tall plant will have one T here, one T here, both of them will be separated out. They will be separated out. Similarly, if I am having two uh, plants, pure, sorry, second plant is pure dwarf plant. <clears throat> the two small T that we represent will be separated out. Okay. So this will be two different gametes. This is as per the law of segregation. Now after the law of segregation, he said that uh, this T may merge with either this T or with this T. Or this T has equal right to either cross with this one or this one. That means both the T's are equal. Both the alleles are equal. And any one allele may go with any one allele. So there is no segregation that this allele is fixed for this or this allele is fixed for this. It, this allele can go with any one of them. Similarly, this allele can also go with any one of them. That is why we are taking the help of the Punnett square, where we are taking one plant on the top and another plant on the left. And then we are going for a cross between them. <laughs> when we are mixing up capital T and from left, we will get small t, capital T and small t, capital T and small t, capital T and small t. Okay. What we have done just now is the law of independent 
so to this is what we have just now you know, done if we were not doing the law of independent assortment then we will have to go for either this t with this t and this t with this over only two options were for, uh, given but here we are considering all the four possibilities which one will be key if if in one fertilization only one seed has formed it can be either this or this or this or this but we are considering all the four possibilities we don't know which possibility is going to happen in reality so this we are considering all the four possibility that is because this capital t has equal freedom to merge with any one of them so you are here we are considering all the four possibilities and this has given us four plants which are capital t small t capital t small t capital t small t and capital t small t so <clears throat> the plants that he has taken as pure choice he has said that this is the parent plant and the first generation he was expecting plants of medium size but he got he has got all the plants tall plants all tall plants and he has given this one as filial one or f1 plant f1 is all our f1 plants the second thing he has done is he has continued working on the f1 plants <clears throat> again what he has done is he has taken two plants out of this and self grows them that means capital t small t is crossing with capital t small t he has taken two plants out of it and has crossed again let us go for the law of independent assortment what is the law of independent sorry the law of segregation Let's apply the law of segregation. According to the law of segregation, the capital T will get separate from the small t. Here also, the capital T will get segregated out from the small t. Now let us go for the law of independent assortment. Law of law of independent assortment says that if we are having two plants uh, with two sets of uh, gametes <clears throat> then they have equal opportunity so i am taking this plant here and taking this plant on the left side capital t small t and now a cross between these two will give rise to four different possibilities what are the four possibilities one is capital t with capital t capital t with small t capital t with t with small t and small t with small t and here we can find the offspring that we are getting are one capital t is capital t another one is capital t small t another one is this one capital t small t and the last one is capital t small t small t. so here this plant is going to be tall plant this plant is going to be tall plant this plant is going to be tall plant and this is a dwarf dwarf okay so what happened i got three different plants three plants which are tall and one and to us three tall plants against one dwarf plant so this is the because of the physical appearance physical appearance in the in the garden where how we are seeing the physical appearance of the plant and that is why we call it as the phenotypical or we say that it is the phenotype or the phenotypical ratio phenotypical ratio in f2 generation and how many characters have we studied of a mono hybrid cross 
and that is 3 is to 1. But we are looking at the planks. This is different. These two are different and this is different. So I get one capital T, capital T. I have one capital T, capital T. Capital T, small t, I have two. And small t, small t, I have one. So this gives me another ratio of this same combination. And what are they? That is capital T, capital T, two. Sorry, one. <clears throat> yes, capital T, capital T, one is to capital T, small t, two is to small t, small t, one. So this is another ratio, 1 is to 2 is to 1. This is only due to the genetical combination or this is the, uh, this is how the genes are arranged or genetical uh, combination. Or we normally call it as the genotypical ratio. Genotypical ratio, that is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Of Monohybrid grows in F2 generation. But one important thing he has noticed here is that a plant becomes tall if at least one of the if at least one of the allele is capital T, and if no alleles are capital, then it becomes tall. That means the uh, small t or the characteristics of small t can be expressed only in the absence of the capital T. Or the capital T can express itself even in the, in the presence of small t. So that is where he has given the next law, that is the law of uh, dominance, where one uh, allele can express itself even in the presence of another allele. And that allele is said to be a dominant allele over the other. And the one that is getting suppressed in the presence of another allele is called the recessive. In nature, in all the plant, uh, organisms, uh, we can find the dominant allele will, allele will be found in larger quantity and the recessive one will be in smaller quantity. Okay. So this is monohybrid growth of F1 generation. <clears throat> yes. Now, uh, if you have any queries related to chapter number, chapter reproduction or uh, heredity, you can ask because one more chapter is there to go through. So, if you have any queries related to that, I can please solve it. In the dihybrid cross we will uh, learn the next class and um, sex determination one another important topic a very small portion but very often in every paper there will be there will be a question on the environmental cues that is also very important okay so if you have any queries please ask <clears throat> either you can chat or check out check if you have any uh, if you have access to mic or not Can we know where is? Okay, if there are no queries, we'll meet in the next class. Uh, I shall let you know uh, when the next class will be, because according to the timetable, this was our last class, but I have requested for uh, one or two extra lectures. Okay? in the next class. Bye.